business, and rhythm is what we sell. Rhythm is our business, all business show as well. Now, if you're feeling through the rhythm, it's what you need. If you got rhythm, you show sure to succeed. Rhythm is our business, business show as well. He's the drummer man. Well, a lot of people think that to speak to today's audience is that you have to update jazz to, you know, bring in elements of modern pop music. Uh, but what we've discovered is that what people really seem to relate the most to is an artistic expression that comes from a really authentic place. You know, our group is to the jazz world kind of like uh, what an early music ensemble is to the classical world. So all the musicians in the group have a real passion for pre-war jazz. And we've all put a lot of study and effort into the, you know, the details of music from that time. And that includes things like, uh, you know, performing and arranging styles, but also things like, um, you know, the instruments we use uh, or the way that we use microphones. So, you know, I think when performers share something that they've put a lot of care into cultivating, something that they really personally love, that I think that that love and care is what makes listeners really connect with a performance, regardless of whether it's new music that they're familiar with or music from a hundred years ago. Well, uh, we play the music of the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s. So uh, the 20s were the beginning of the big band era. Uh, this was um, groups like Duke Ellington got their start, Gene Goldcat, uh, uh, Fletcher Henderson. Uh, the term hot jazz comes from this time. Uh, this is you know, the music of prohibition, of the, uh, the flappers, of speakeasies, uh, you know, the Charleston, the Great Gatsby, things like that. Uh, and then as we move into the 30s, the music starts to smooth out. It starts to swing. Uh, so these are the days of, you know, the golden age of radio. This is when Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw and Count Basie and Glenn Miller, all those guys got their start at this time. And they would play in, you know, gorgeous art deco supper clubs and, uh, you know, big ballrooms filled with dancers. Uh, but they would not only play live for people, they would also remote broadcast from those venues so that people, uh, you know, listening at home on their, uh, their little radio sets could hear, uh, hear the bands. So, you know, this is the music that, that started in the 30s and, and continued through the 40s, uh, and it was the music that really brought America through World War II. Now, in addition to performing those classics, I'm also writing and arranging new music, but in the old style. And I think that to keep this music alive and vital, it's really important to maintain not just the performance tradition, but to keep the repertoire growing with, with good new music. Otherwise, I think we just sort of all become tribute bands. Um, you know, my group has its own signature compositions, our own signature arrangements, just like bands did in the swing era, in addition to us playing classic repertoire. And I think that kind of gives us a place where um, we're part of the tradition rather than being people just looking back and recreating. <laughs>
impressed at how our music connects with people of all different ages and people people from all over the world you know we've got a following of college students and lots of uh, 20 30 somethings who are sort of um they're like a counterculture that have rediscovered swing music and dancing and vintage clothes uh older folks on the other hand who are fans like this music because they remember it nostalgically as you know the music of their parents generation or maybe maybe even their own generation I think it has such a wide appeal because there's something about this music that just makes people feel joy. It, it makes them want to dance, you know? Uh, it's music that kind of predates that idea of being too cool for school, you know? Uh, when it was still like okay to lose yourself in something. And I think that, you know, we frequently present alongside dance performers or we play for social dancing, but even in concert performances, we see listeners sitting there and they're bobbing their heads and they're tapping their feet and and sometimes they just can't help themselves and they get up and they dance in the aisles. Yeah. 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 